So the idea of this video is to show how to use the curve fitting tool in MATLAB to basically obtain uh, the parameters of the recrystallization model. And especially we are gonna uh, obtain the parameters T50 and N, the exponent. We assume that this parameter K is constant uh, and still is approximately 0 0.693. So we are gonna assume that this is constant and we are gonna obtain these parameters. And this is some experimental data that we obtain time and fraction of recrystallization. So we have this time, this fraction, this is how the experimental data looks like. So we need to fit these parameters to match this equation with this experimental data. So for that, we are gonna use in MATLAB. So there is different ways that we can go. First, you know, I added a, a, a file in cam, on Canvas that you can, where you can double click and those two uh, vectors are gonna show up in the workspace. So you have them available. But in case that you don't have that and you want to do everything manual, what you could do is create a new variables, actually create two new variables. One, basically we can rename it like a T experimental and the other is gonna be uh, uh, renamed as X experimental, which is the fraction of recrystallization experimental. We can double click the variable so we can edit those variables. So in this case, the time experimental and we can manually edit and put the times that we want, 10, 20 and so on. Or we can, you can have, have the data, for example, in this case in Excel, and I can copy, come into my lab in the time uh, vector and paste, control C, control V, uh, the same with the, the fractional recrystallization, control C, and in the respective variable, just control V. Okay, so we have T experimental, X experimental. Now, if you open the recrystallization model that uh, I share with you, so that's how the data looks like here. Um, so if I run the model, basically assuming K, as I said, constant 0 0.693 for steels, I'm putting like two um, parameters here, random parameters. I can run this model and basically um, this calculation is gonna give me the approximation of the uh, fractional recrystallization equation versus the experimental model, experimental data. So in this case, uh, I need to, you know, run different trial and errors up to the point that fit this experimental data, which could be like time consuming. <clears throat> so what I wanna try to do is using the app called Curve Fitting in MATLAB, using the uh, time experimental and X experimental. So I open the curve fitting <clears throat> tool. And we have in the school, we have limited number of license for this curve fitting. Sometimes here could show you an error saying that all of the license are not are taken. So the, the app is not available. And that could happen because a lot of people are using this app at the same time. So if you see an error here that the number of license have reached maximum, you cannot use at that time. But you know, we have enough license in cam on campus, so probably it's gonna be fine. Uh, so you can now select the data that you want to interpolate and notice that when you select the data here, it's a show like another menu. And actually you can interpolate data in 3D, X, Y, and Z. In this case, we just have a 2D interpolation. So we're gonna select that the, the X data, the time, that's our X axis. The Y data is gonna be fractional recrystallization, in this case, X experimental. Mm -hmm. So our data, if I close this variable, is gonna look like these dots here, mm. experimental data. And in our case, right now, by default, we have selected a polynomial one degree. So that's why it's interpolating a uh, line here. We can just choose you know, different degrees of uh, polynomial if we want to uh, calibrate like a polynomial here. In our case, we want to uh, fit this to a particular custom equation. So we open the... Uh, um, options and open and click in the custom equations. <clears throat> so when we click that, uh, uh, we can add a custom, custom equation here where our dependent variable or independent variable is X and our independent, uh, independent variable is Y. So, you know, X is for us time. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, what we can do is modify our equation accordingly. So in our case, the fraction of recrystallization, if we recap, uh, y in this case is equals to one minus x minus, in this case, this is gonna be constant, 0 0.693. Time is our x variable the, or the independent variable. And this is a constant, and this is a parameter that we determine, and this is another parameter. So let's <clears throat> plot that one, uh, this type, type this one here. So one minus, exponent or minus 0.693, which is a constant, times in parentheses, we are gonna place the time uh, experimental, in this case is x, which is the x axis, over, uh, let's call time 50, the second uh, parameter, and that's gonna be at the power of n, which is the other parameter. Mm -hmm. So, in this case, you know, fortunately, Depending of your of your machine, that could just automatically detect the parameters. Here in this case, are automatically detect. So uh, you see, n was uh, selected like 0. 0.6 and t 50 like 52. So those are the parameters that fit in pretty well the model. Now sometimes it show up some errors here, and that's because uh, sometimes we need to narrow down the uh, upper the lower and upper limits of our coefficients. So for example, if we know that these parameters are always positive, we can just, you know, if and it has given us any result, we can just, in the lower space, for example, we can put zero and zero. So it's gonna give us a more, in this case, obviously, because it's a simple model, it's giving us the same result. So it doesn't matter. And in the upper parameters, for example, if we still have some problems with feeding the data, we can just narrow down a little bit more the upper limit. So for example, I know that n usually it's an exponent that goes from zero to one. So I don't want, I don't need to go to infinite. So I can just zero to one. So obviously here is the same result. And this parameter upper, it could infinite as well is too large. So I could put like a large number, for example, 10,000, something like that. So basically it's feeling much better. So now, uh, basically here in this equation is telling me what is the result. So uh, some information here, so remember our equation. So in this case, T50 uh, was calculated at 52.34, in this case, 33, 52 seconds. N is the exponent, in this case, around 0.6, you know. So obviously have some significant numbers here. We can just narrow to, uh, to 0.6 and 52. And as you see here, the R square, which is indication of how good, how well the equation is fitted in the experimental data is 0 0.9999. So it's really close to one, which means good fitting. So, you know, if you are far to one, for example, 0 0.8 or 0 0.7, means that the fitting is not quite good. So we can explore another options. But sometimes just the experimental data doesn't fit pretty well the model and that's okay. But in this case, we obtain these two parameters. So if we go back to our code that I share, and if we change, for example, this one as a 52, and in this case, uh, N as a 0 0.6, which was the one, the parameters that the model determined, and I run this again in this code, you are gonna see now that the model is fitting pretty well the experimental data, and those are basically the solution of this nonlinear problem. So that's basically a short tutorial, how to use the, um, the curve fitting, um, uh, option in my lab.